Now with this project, I am going to construct this dimmer. And this is going to be for an undersink LED, so I can vary the intensity of the LED strip that goes around under the sink, as well as turn it on and off. Essentially, it's the same as this module, but with the addition of an on and off switch. Now, there are a couple of advantages to that. Uh, number one is I can completely shut the power off. And number two, I can flush mount this where I can't flush mount that. Yeah, it just looks nicer. And we're going to do a step-by-step -step project in building this. These are the various components I'm going to be using in the LED controller project. Now one thing I've been starting to do with these projects is to come up with a project sheet like this. As you can download this sheet uh, from the webpage. And it's basically got the schematic, it's got the box hole cut out for inside. It shows you the different currents uh, that I've calculated uh, for the different brightness values, a bill of materials, and uh, you know how the box is constructed and so on. The components for this include this dimmer. Now this is just a generic made in China dimmer and instead of trying to design my own this is three to five dollars and so there's just no way I could build it for that so I'm just going to use what's already available and this is a pulse width modulated dimmer so this has all the electronics built into it and I'm going to install that along with an on off switch into this project box with this as the front panel. Uh, this front panel is made by a company called Front Panel Express and they do custom panel work and they will build quantities of one so they are really good for hobbyists and things and so you can either have something like this made or not I suppose but you know I wanted to have it look really nice when I was done so uh, this is actually what's going to be showing under the sink. Between this project and just mounting this dimmer is that I can turn the dimmer off with a switch. And that's kind of important because, and I'll show you when this project is done, this dimmer does produce a little bit of RF noise. Not a lot, but just enough to be concerned. So when I'm not using the panel, I can shut it off. I also have a, a terminal strip that I'm going to mount to the back side of this so that we can wire the panel up. This is going to be a step-by-step-ish type of project. I'm not going to go into every little detail on how I did it, but I'll give you kind of the steps as we go along. The process is going to be to take this box and drill some holes in the back and then mount this into the back of it. And then basically take the guts out of this and along with the switch and mount them to the front and then just put them together and make the connections and we're done. Well, I drilled six holes in the line here, and that's for this terminal block, which will fit in there like that. And so now we'll continue on with the front panel. Looks nice, doesn't it? And first, the on off switch, which we need to determine for sure which which part is off. Usually it's the opposite, but I've seen them where sometimes they're not, so it's always good to test it. So we'll get our meter out on the ohm scale. Okay, so we want to install it like this. And I was finally able to get it to fit, although I really had to push on it very difficult or very hard. So it does fit, but I think what I'll do is go into the setup and make this square hole just a little bit larger. Uh, in case you want to order one, it'll be a little easier. Okay, then the next piece is the potentiometer. I'm going to put some tape on here just so that I don't mar the surface. And I'm just going to tighten this up just a little bit. Alright, so there you have it. There's 
the front panel assembled and all we have to do now is to connect this terminal strip with uh, the switch and this. I've got the uh, terminal strip screwed to the end with some hardware and now I'm going to take the instruction sheet and I'm going to cut out this label and then just use some scotch tape and then put it on so at least I can see what the wiring diagram is. So now we have the wiring phase completed. We have the uh, four wires connected to the terminal strip and also the switch is connected along with the potentiometer. So now it's just a matter of uh, the final button up which we'll do now. And so we're done. Here's the box. On off switch and adjustment for the dimmer. So now I'm going to test it, see if it works. So now I've got the uh, box hooked up, just LED on one side and 12 volts on the other. And turn the power on. And the dimmer works. So you can leave the dimmer where you want it. Turn power off. Space put. Now we're going to measure to see how much residual current we have here. Put this clamp meter on the positive side. We have zero current, which means that's fine because it's off. We turn it on at full blast. We have um, almost 800 milliampers of current. But then the significant part is when we turn it off, we have 15 milliamps of current. Turn the switch off and it goes down to zero. If I didn't put the switch in, even when I turn this down as far as it'll go, we're still draining power from the battery. And that just doesn't work well with a battery when you're boondocking or put the RV in storage or whatever. You want to be able to turn this off. Now I did mention this is a pulse width modulated dimmer. And I just got a little radio here. We're on AM band. And you can hear a noise. You can hear noise. But see, this thing acts like an antenna. Now this does not affect FM. This does not affect TV. It only affects AM. So the only caveat with using these pokes with modulated dimmers is they can be a little noisy in the AM band.